not a misprint in your program. You actually do have a government lawyer talking to you about innovation. <laughs> uh, but when you have the clients that we have at the Small Business Administration, which are next generation of entrepreneurs and small businesses, you have to be innovative to try to provide for them and to keep up with them. So what I want to talk about today a little bit is what is the SBA and how are we being innovative for our clients? So let's start with what is the SBA? Small Business Administration is a federal agency that is dedicated to growing, supporting, and helping to finance small businesses throughout the country. We do that through three core programs of ours uh, that I'll talk to you about in a moment. We provide counseling, capital, and contracting. Counseling. We have a network of counselors to advise on every aspect of starting your business, whether it's a small starting your biz, writing your business plan, how to access funding, how to grow and maintain your business. We do that in our 68 district offices. Through we, we leverage uh, retired executives who come in and provide their services, volunteer, and if you can't reach one of our district offices or one of our uh, retired executives. We also have a network of small, small business development centers scattered throughout the country that's thousands strong to help you grow. So even if you have a killer business plan and you have access to unparalleled uh, consultation and unparalleled advice, you still need money. And there the SBA comes in handy. Not that we provide direct loans to you, but we use the full faith and credit of the federal government to back loans, to guarantee loans, so that that bank that you're going to to start your small business or that our clients are going to go start their small business at will take that extra chance on what could be the next great American business. So whether the loan is $500 microloan or $5 million to buy property to expand your business, we're there to guarantee that loan so that the business can get started. While not every business may need capital, certainly uh, every business in order to grow needs customers. And there the SBA delivers the biggest customer of all, Uncle Sam. Each year, the federal government spends hundreds of billions of dollars in procurement. And by law, 23% of those federal procurements are to go to small businesses. And so we at the SBA work with other federal agencies to make sure that's happening. We don't always hit that goal. Last year, we did hit that goal of 23%. Uh, we're hoping to make it back to back this year. Stay tuned, and uh, we'll see. We also look forward to making sure that women-owned, veteran-owned, disadvantage-owned businesses are also able to participate in those contracts. So those are the big three. There's another area that the SBA is involved in that you wouldn't necessarily think about. That's in disaster. When disaster strikes, we're right there, right alongside FEMA, to provide financing to businesses to help them that have been uh, struck by disaster to help them get back on their feet. So between counseling, capital, contracting, and disaster, that's what we do. The innovation comes in how we deliver those services, how we deliver those services to our client. Under our administrator, Maria Contreras-Sweet, who's a Californian, uh, she has rebranded the SBA to stand for smart, bold, and accessible. So what's smart? Smart is the SBA using technology in order to streamline and simplify processes. And I just want to talk about two examples that we do that with. One that we rolled out earlier this year is called SBA One, which essentially takes our lending platform, puts it online, removes the paperwork, streamlines it so that banks can get to yes quicker to provide loans and capital out to small businesses. Now, since we've got a group of lawyers in the room, there's one very interesting issue that we had to wrestle with in here, and that was using digital signatures. Uh, we talked a little bit about risk aversion in one of the earlier panels, and uh, there were some very lively discussions about the evidentiary value in trial of wet versus digital signatures. We prevailed and felt we had to go forward with these digital signatures, and uh, hopefully we're not going to get sued over this, but if so, we think we'll be fine. The other program that we're using to leverage technology is called Link, with a C. And what that does, it's a little bit like Match.com, except the, bait, the date that we're talking about is with a banker. We provide, through our website, free of charge, a platform for borrowers to answer a few questions. That gets blasted out to our information network of lenders. They come together, and hopefully they make a match on a loan. We just rolled this out with our microloan programs, and we're going to try to do more of it in the coming year. So that's smart. Bold. Bold for us at the SBA means market making, market expansion. 1% of our small businesses export overseas. 
However, 95% of the world's customers are outside of our borders. So we've been working very hard to how do we provide innovation? How do we push our clients to be able to reach out overseas? One of the things that we've done is we've provided grants to various states to foster and sort of seed money for innovation called our STEP program, which helps exports get out to the market. The second is, for the first time, the SBA has been involved in two of the major trade negotiations that are going on, the TTIP and the TPP, both which have small business chapters in them, which hopefully will be able to encourage more of our small businesses to compete in the international marketplace and expand and export. The third way is that we're using the SBA itself as a model for economic security. We just held a recent global summit where there were over 150 countries coming to participate, but only 15 countries around the world have government agencies that are dedicated to fostering the growth of small businesses. So we're hoping that the SBA can expand that pool and be able to do that. Last thing is accessibility. And with accessibility, we want to make sure that Everyone, no matter who you are, who your parents are, where you went to school or where you didn't go to school, has an opportunity to participate in the entrepreneurial dream. So we're focusing on millennials, providing them materials, expertise, toolkits, so that they can probably hire the best person that they know themselves. We're also looking at how do we, uh, we're also looking at our programs to see how do we help formerly incarcerated individuals so that whether or not you're on parole or probation does not stop you from realizing your legitimate entrepreneurial ambitions. <laughs> Heavy emphasis on the legitimate. So that's part of uh, the accessibility that we're doing there at the SBA. Of course, we're always leveraging our statute. We've been very creative with it. We've done so in this recent year to wipe out fees on all loans under $150,000. $300,000 to, uh, to veterans. One of our most innovative products is our Small Business Investment Company program. And what that does is essentially replicates many SBAs throughout the country. A group of funders can get together. They raise a certain amount of capital. The SBA will match them with every dollar they raise with $2 of our own. And this has helped uh, fund some companies, help to invest in some companies that you may have heard of, Costco, Nike, Tesla. The program's been around for a number of years, and we have about $23, $24 billion under management through that program. So tapping this innovation has allowed us to be, play a vital role in the economy coming back. As you know, uh, we've had over 61 months of straight uh, job growth, unemployment rates under 6%, two out of three net new jobs come from small businesses. And so this isn't necessarily your grandparents' SBA. And the reason that we're able to do this is by tapping into innovation and delivering for our clients every day. So come check us out at sba.gov. Thank you for your time.